Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from DanceTube.tv and today I'm reviewing the world's smallest underwater drone. Now this could also be the perfect beginner drone for you guys out there who have been considering picking up an underwater drone but just had no idea where to look or just didn't want to spend a lot of money on your first underwater drone. Now the drone is called Chasing Dory. It's available right now through Kickstarter. So check it out if you want to get an early bird price. But also if you go to the Chasing website, then you can also see Chasing Dory through there and it'll be available through their site in the future. But for now you can purchase it through the Kickstarter page. Now if you're new to DanceTube.tv, then make sure to subscribe as I am brutal honest in my tech reviews and I thoroughly test the technology that I'm reviewing for you guys so you actually get a true understanding of how it perform in the real world. Chasing Dory has actually innovated the underwater drone world. It's really revolutionary. It's honestly amazing. It has a GPS buoy that can float on the surface of the water, and that means that you don't have a physical connection from the buoy to shore. That means you don't have to worry about a tether getting in the way, but that also means that you need to be mindful that the buoy can float away and you only have 15 meters of connection from your smartphone to the boy. One thing I would have loved to have seen is some sort of plastic loop or connection point where I could actually connect a fishing line, a piece of rope, or really anything so that I actually have a physical connection point to the boy. Otherwise, it could float away in a strong current and I would completely lose my drone. The drone itself only weighs 1.1 kilograms. It's extremely lightweight, but amazingly enough, it maneuvers perfectly underwater. It just glides through the water and it looks effortless as you control it with your smartphone. I was really impressed with how responsive the smartphone controls were as well. That actually did blow my mind. It was really easy. A lot of the time I've used smartphone controls and it's just not as good as a controller, but I was impressed. I thought it did a fantastic job. I would love to see an additional controller added, maybe to a bundle later on, or the option to connect it to some sort of third-party controller, but for the most part the smartphone controls were fantastic and I can't really flaw them at all. Also when it comes to the connection from the buoy to the drone itself you have a 15 meter tether there so that means that you have 15 meters from your smartphone to the buoy and then you have a 15 meter tether from the buoy to the drone so that means in total you can get 30 meters of range from this drone but that's really pushing it to its limits and you need to be mindful again that that buoy can float away so try to keep it as close as you can to your smartphone. Considering this is such a small and portable underwater drone, it still packs a punch with some of the pro features still coming along to Chasing Dory. So you have the five thrusters, which we saw in the Gladius Mini, and it does an amazing job of holding its depth. So that means it has depth lock as well as tilt lock. So these features are more premium pro grade features, but they've brought them into a consumer based affordable underwater drone so you get all of those really cool features at such an affordable price so I was happy that they included that and with the 45 degree tilt lock it actually smoothly scans the ocean floor or you can obviously peer up at the crystal waters above and that actually happens really nicely I was impressed with how slowly it moves when you've got it in a tilted position and I was also really impressed with the different speed settings you have the low speed setting which which creates really nice cinematic movements and then the high setting which is a lot faster and a lot more maneuverable if you want to get the drone back to you as quick as possible. Now I do want to mention that I had a few issues with the reliability of the application. You do have to remember though that this is an early review unit and it's not even officially released to the public just yet and Chasing have told me that future app updates will be coming out very soon to add more features as well as more stability and reliability to the drone 
drone and the application itself. So I'm really excited to see what happens there. And I will bring some more videos to the channel in the future if you guys would like to see that. The most important question that you need to ask yourself is how much use can I get out of an underwater drone? Now, if you work in an industry where you could benefit from an underwater drone, whether that's peer inspection, boat inspection, uh, swimming pool inspection, whether you're a scuba diver, or whether you just want to explore underwater, then this could be really beneficial, but it really does depend on the clarity of that water. If you live in an area where you have murky water, similar to where I live, then you can't get too much use out of an underwater drone, unfortunately. You do need clear water. It's really tricky to find clear water in my area, and it does limit how much I can actually use an underwater drone, which is really unfortunate. But if you live in an area where you have pristine water around you, if you don't have to travel too far to check out clear water, then you could really have a lot of fun with an underwater drone. And I think, like I mentioned at the beginning, the Chasing Dory is the perfect entry level drone, as you're not spending too much money, but you're still getting the reliability and the responsiveness of one of the larger, more reliable underwater drones out there. So I'm really amazed with how much they've packed into this tiny little unit here. Dory also offers a 1080p camera with two 250 lumen lights so that you can illuminate underwater and ensure that the frame is actually lit up and you can see what's going on under the water. The lights themselves were actually quite strong and the camera is a lot more impressive than I thought it would be and it's actually a decent 1080p camera. I don't know why I was surprised by that, but a lot of the time 1080p is a little bit underwhelming, especially comparing it to the 4K Gladius Mini, but genuinely I was impressed with the 1080p camera. And another thing to mention is it does have internal storage of eight gigabytes, so that's a decent amount of storage, and it means that you can really just back up the footage on the go. And seeing as it's only a 1080p camera, the files are not too big, meaning that you can actually shoot quite a lot before you fill up that storage. Another aspect of this drone that really impressed me was the battery life. Now it says that it will get up to an hour of playtime, but I've got well over an hour in all of the tests that I've done, so they're really underselling what this thing can do. You get well over an hour, and that really did impress me. Uh, I put it in so many different situations, and it really did handle amazingly well. And they say it only takes about two hours to charge, and you only have to charge the drone. You don't have to charge the buoy as well as the drone, where other underwater drones, you have to charge multiple components. But Chasing Dory, you only have to charge the drone, and then you ready to go. I'm really impressed with how much tech has been crammed into this unit here. Chasing Dory actually features a temp and a depth sensor, as well as gyroscopes, accelerometers, and more. So you actually get premium performance at a truly affordable price. It's honestly amazing what they've crammed into such a compact unit. Also, you have the option to share your footage online or live stream straight from your device. So again, really cool features from an affordable drone. It's amazing to see that they haven't cut back to try to make sales for the larger unit, which a lot of companies do. A lot of companies will cut back on features and only make them available in their premium lines. But Chasing have gone all out with their Chasing Dory and they've made pretty much everything available from the premium unit in an affordable, portable little underwater drone. Own. And honestly, I love the design of Chasing Dory. It's extremely maneuverable, like I mentioned. It just glides through the water. And overall, the experience has been really fun. I've enjoyed testing Chasing Dory, and I think it really is the best affordable underwater drone on the market. And it's also the world's smallest underwater drone right now. But that doesn't mean that you're missing out on any of the features or technology of the higher end drones. And that's why I'm really excited to see Chasing Dory enter the market very soon and I'm excited to see what people think of this. So if you've got any other questions or if you've got anything that you'd like me to test in the future then let me know and I can do some more Chasing Dory videos on the channel. But that's it guys, thank you so much for watching, make sure to have a beautiful day and peace out.